Hi guys, my name is Akshay Tiwari and I'm the founder of Hyderabad Poetry Project. Every middle class family has two major problems. One being engineering and second being lack of guidance. I remember when I was in my 12th standard when I really wanted to get into army because my teenage brain told me that to serve the country you have to be in the army. And I definitely failed at it. And at that point when I was lost and being a middle class family, the solution for all my problems were engineering. And I remember that day when I was talking to my brother telling, I'm really not sure if engineering is my thing. Uh, I really love computers, but I really don't know if that, that could be my thing. And I remember him telling me, the age we are in is to experiment and not to get settled. This one quote made all the difference. I had to basically think about it every night during my dual standard before I chose engineering. Because I realized that I have four years in engineering and I could do anything in those four years. Because at the end of the day, my parents wanted me to be successful after those four years and not during those four years. So when I started in my dual standard or in my engineering first year, when I started, I started dancing. I found this new love towards b-boying and hip-hop culture. Uh, and I started dancing at that point in time because I was in the first generation uh, in the hip hop scene in Hyderabad. Uh, we were learning everything from YouTube, right? And then when I was learning everything from YouTube, I really fell in love with dancing. And when I did that, I really thought that dancing could be my forever thing. I really felt comfortable in my shoes. And I really thought that you know what, I'll make dancing my career. And when I actually did that, I started dancing, I was going to engineering, I was going to my college, I was coming back, I was again going to my dance studio, I was coming back. And at that point, there was one time when I had to attend Nagaton because my college made it compulsory. And I still remember that day, I had no clue about coding. Um, I had to develop a website to basically win that hackathon and I had no clue how to do that. And it was a 24 hour hackathon and I remember that night when I sat all night to basically learn how to build a website and I won the second prize the next day. That day I realized that I loved light dancing and loved coding. I really fell in love with coding. Uh, this, that particular night when I actually saw what magic can a code do. Uh, in real world. And at that point, I really started getting uh, into the coding and developing websites, developing web apps, and at that point, I really got interested in open source communities. When I did go into open source communities and started coding, quickly I became a community builder. I was going and uh, mentoring a lot of contributors across the country, and there was this one time. Before that, let me tell you, I was an introvert back then. And this was one time when I went to help a couple of students with coding problems. I was sitting in the back bench helping them with the code and a colleague of mine has to come down and speak to the crowd. And there were almost 600 crowd in the audience. And a day before, the D-Day was there, he got sick. And there's nobody to replace him to go speak to the audience. And I was the only one who had to speak to people. And I realized that day, the day when it come, uh, I was standing in front of 500 plus people and I still remember I said, hi, a moment of silence. I didn't know what to say. But later, I continued started speaking. I finished my session and I remember this one, put, one student walks to me and tells me, you know what, sir, you should try stand up for me. And for a second I thought, is he asking me to change my career path? Uh, but before I answered my question, he told me that I can easily connect to you because of your lame humor. And that definitely was a compliment because I knew how to speak and I knew how to connect with people. And that day I realized that I was building community. I was trying to tell people that let's make our web better place for everybody. But you should also know that that day I realized that I liked coding and I loved speaking to people. I loved building communities. And that day was the most comfortable day I ever had in my entire life because I found my
dream job. So I remember till date that that day basically after this guy came and told me that I, I spoke after that at almost 100 plus conferences, colleges and everything. But I still like dancing, I still like coding, I still like doing math, I still like swimming. I just prioritized my well-being, I just prioritized what I want to do. In. I remember when a lot of people come to me and tell me that, you know what, I really don't think I can do this. And for me, I understood that every path I chose in my life, I was never uh, unsuccessful, I never failed, for the only reason being that I never wanted anything out of this. I never wanted money, I never wanted a better life, I just wanted to figure out what I wanted to do for the next coming entire life. And I realized that it was just my self-confidence which was helping me. And there was this one particular story which I always used to read when I used to feel low. Uh, a very nice story which basically brought my self-confidence up every single time. There was this one business executive who lost everything in a business. He had to pay a lot of debts, his creditors stopped giving him money, and he was sitting on a bench really sad. And he didn't know what to do. And then this old guy walks to him and says, I think you are in a problem. And he says, yes I do. And he tells him everything and the old, old guy goes, I think I can help you. And when he said that, he told, okay, uh, how, how can you help me? And he says that, he just turns back, writes a half million dollar check and gives it to him and walks away. And when he sees the check, John D. Rockefeller signed, his, signed the check. So John D. Rockefeller back then was the richest man in the world. And he got all happy and, and this old guy before leaving he told that, you know what, one year later come back and give me back my money. At the same bench, same pub, same place. And when he was really happy that he had like half a million check in his pocket, he thought, let me put this in my safe, let me figure things out. If things don't work out, I need to have my half a million in my safe. And while he was working towards it, he figured everything. He paid his debts, his business started working again, and he became rich again. He never used a check, he never got a chance to use a check. When he goes back to the same pub a year later, on the same bed, this old guy walks into him, walks in and says, did everything go well? And before this guy could give his check back and tell him the story, this old lady walks to walks from behind and says, this guy ran away again. I'm really sorry if this guy was uh, disturbing you. He always walks around and tells people that a John D. Rock fell over and pulled him back, pulled him back. And then, in the, at that point, he thought, oh, I never had that half million dollars with me. It was always a self-confidence which he built, thinking that if anything goes wrong, I have this, let me give my 100% test. And that, my friends, is self-confidence. I can show you the real data of how self-confidence works and how, how self-confidence and productive work go hand in hand. There you go, the graph. This is the actual data. This is how self-confidence and productive work, uh, productive work go hand in hand. The more you believe in yourself, the more you don't really get greedy when you're trying to figure out what you want to be at the end of the day gives you, make, gives you the 100 person ability to give 100 person in that particular work. I remember when I figured everything in life that I want to be a community builder, I want to speak to people, I want to build communities which could actually make a difference in the society, I wanted to help other people do the same because I realized when I started my journey to experiment with life and figure out where I want to settle in at the end of the day, it was too tough to be even think about something which I could do. And I realized that day that I should teach or share whatever I've learned in my whole journey. And that day I started Hyderabad Poetry Project. Hyderabad Poetry Project is a movement to create a platform for poets, storytellers, spoken word artists to come together, help each other and also showcase their art not just to Hyderabad but around the country. 
The reason I started Hyderabad Query Project was not because I wanted to start something which was not existing in Hyderabad. There were a lot of communities in poetry, in spoken word, in storytelling. My whole idea was that me being, myself being a poet, and I really loved showcasing my art, but at the end of the day, the newcomers didn't know how to basically start off with a poem. The newcomers didn't know how to basically structure their story. And I realized that for the newcomers, I should start something which could be an umbrella where gets, which gets every single artist who, who fall under the literature umbrella to come together and help each other at the end of it. I remember the first time I did my event uh, at one of the venues in Hyderabad, uh, an open mic where 100 people walked in. At that point in time, I was obviously again scared to speak in front of the people because I realized that the hackathon that I used to speak at, I knew more than the people sitting in front. So it was very easy to talk to them. But at some point, when it was poetry, a lot of amazing poets were sitting in front of me and I had to host them. And I was really scared. But once I hosted that event, brought those 70 to 100 people together, it felt like I actually did something for the society. And it really doesn't mean that I'll have to earn something at the end of the day if, if, if what I do lives forever in Hyderabad. People loved meeting over of, of like-mindedness, something which would actually mean something for them. It could be a nostalgia or it could be actually a scary part, right? I'll tell you one more story about how for me, struggle was something which I really liked because I realized that if you don't struggle, your body is too soft, your mind is too weak to even take anything in this real life situation. I remember the story when somebody walks to me and tells me that they say that the butterfly dies if you try to take it out of the chrysalis, the pupa. Because the whole energy or the beautiful butterfly can fly only while trying to push out of the pupa or chrysalis and come out. That basically builds its muscles. And if you find an easy way out, like break the butterfly's pupa for her, it will die. Or it will be this form. It won't be the beautiful butterfly we're talking about. Every time I listen to the story or I read this, I come across the story, it tells me that struggling is not a bad thing. Struggling can actually make you a better person. Struggling can actually make you understand what failure feels like even before failing on a larger scale. After I started Hyderabad Poetry Project and succeeding in getting literature in Hyderabad to its actual form, being a Nizam culture, I realized that a lot of art journals, various art journals, needed time to basically come together and also showcase their art. And that is how Trihagas Carnival walked into picture. Last weekend, we did Trihagas Carnival, which was a celebration of art and art lovers, getting various art forms together, all original arts, and to basically showcase it to the rest of the city. When I, when I thought about Trihagas Carnival, it was an inspiration for me because I always wanted to be an artist, which I couldn't because I figured my comfortable space. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of artists who want to find this broken compass which they're looking for. They want to choose this uh, path, but they have no way to basically showcase their product, showcase their time. Trihagas Carnival was a great success and what we did was we bought almost 80 to 100 artists showcasing their art and a lot of artists now are being called, called across the country for various art festivals. So my basic magic mantra throughout my life was in three steps. I explored, I experimented in my life to see which would probably be the most comfortable space. I never expected anything and that is why I succeeded in every single path I chose. And then, if I didn't really feel really comfortable in those, I repeated the same, same steps again. I went back, I explored, I didn't expect anything, and at some point I realized that commu building communities was something which was really close to me, which had that emotional connection which I wanted to always share with people. And that is why I've never repeated again.
thank you.